Hi, I'm Harvey Lowe. I'm back at Garage Studio Modelers and I guess it's my turn to show you a few tips and techniques uh, that I'm applying to this wonderful 172nd Perfect Grade Millennium Falcon. I'd like to thank Dave Forrest for having me in his garage. Uh, I'm freezing my butt off, but I can still model. It's great to be here. Um, I want to go over a few things about this model first. Is that um, it, it, there's a lot of parts to any model, and this one is no exception. Uh, the, here's an example of the uh, instructions, and you can see there's lots of parts to this kit. Now here's a tip. What I do is, when there's this many parts, I take them all out of the box, and I have this big uh, bulletin board in my uh, basement, and I tack all of these on the wall, and I number the sprues. It just makes it a lot easier to go see where sprue F is, where sprue A, and get the parts, and as opposed to leaving them in the box. Uh, and this kit uh, is no exception. You're going to need to do that, uh, because if you go through, if people who have this kit, there's a lot of detail to this kit, and they go back and forth from different sprues. The other tip that I do with building complex models, you see I've written these notes in here. I usually put little tick marks to uh, parts of the, the stages of construction where I've finished them. And that way I, I'm not missing anything. And sometimes I circle something because i got to come back to it. Um, it's just something that I use, uh, especially with science fiction. I'm not a science fiction modeler, so I'm not as familiar with uh, this subject matter. So I don't want to miss uh, any sequence of detail. As all of you know, when you're planning a build, you want to think about the process and the stages of the build before you even start. That's what I do. Um, should I follow the instructions? Do I do them in a different order? That's really up to you. But in this case, I actually followed page by page. And you can see I'm ticking off the pages as I go along finishing the model in the various steps. The other thing I like to do with a model is I like to begin thinking about the final finish. And this one, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail uh, when I do the painting and weathering, is basically what I'm aiming at is something like, like this in the instructions. I'll talk a little bit more about the painting. But before I do that, you're going to see a couple of pictures that flash across the screen. Uh, and my apologies, I didn't do the build uh, as part of this because it was a long process. The model actually took, a, if, if I was to sit down and, and not do anything else and maybe spent two hours the evening, it probably would have taken me at least two to three weeks to, to build this model. It's a snap type model, uh, but with any snap type model, I still also use, always use glue. Um, and it takes time. So it, instead of putting parts together on camera, I've already assembled it and I'll show you in a moment how I go about painting. But the pictures that you're going to see across the screen show some of the details uh, that I took during the construction. And, and uh, the first set of pictures will show the, the cockpit area of a Millennium Falcon. Uh, the little figures that you see in the pictures here are all done with Vallejo uh, paints. I find they are the best. So what I did was I simply sprayed, uh, I used Tamiya uh, pr primer, fine primer, right out of the can. And I sprayed the figures and I sprayed the cockpit interior in the white primer. And then I used Vallejo paints uh, to do the details of the figures. It, it didn't really take long. These are 70 second scale figures. Uh, there's one picture that shows a quarter. Uh, a coin that shows the, the size of the figures. I actually did those in, in maybe two evenings uh, fairly quickly. You, you can have an option on this kit to have either a clear canopy or a ribbed canopy without the glass that you can see through. So you can see the details. If you are building this kit, it does give you decals for all of the instrument panels, but I, I actually didn't use them because the instrument panels in this kit, th they're, they're, there's relief on them. There's little buttons and little things and three-dimensional little knobs, and I thought it probably would be easier just to, to paint them. So excuse the Star Wars fans that I might have taken some liberties in some of the color that I used in the cockpit, but that's how I did that. And some other pictures that you see uh, before you show the, uh, the wiring in the kit. Uh, and it shows you the complexity of the model um, during the assembly process. 
And while, while again, while I'm not building that in front of you, take your time when you're doing this. It's not a rush. You're, you're having fun. Um, but there were some fit problems with this kit. So make sure that you use fillers where necessary. And one of the pictures that you'll see is there's a, a gap in uh, uh, this part right over here. There's some cylinders on the side here where there's some large gaps. Uh, I had to use a lot of putty and filler there. Um, but I guess in, in, in a moment, I'll show you uh, a bit about the weathering process. And as I say, this is a very nice kit. Uh, beautiful instructions and uh, as I say these techniques can be used across any type of subject matter from armor to aircraft. Okay I'm back and as you can see this is the Millennium Falcon it's a big model um, it's I don't know maybe a foot and a bit half across um, and you can see that there's a lot of detail on this um, it's, it's a snap type kit as I mentioned before you can see the bottom detail is the same as the top detail. Now, when I built the model, I actually primed it uh, in Tamiya Fine Spray White using a can. I actually used a, the, the right out of the can because it, it, it levels itself. That's the great stuff with the Tamiya uh, primer. But then I decided to take a different approach. I don't, I don't paint a model the same way every time. So this time, instead of working from white, I decided to apply a dark black base to work from. So then after the white went on, I used the white to see where I needed to fix certain seams because there were large gaps here. You can see it's all filled up now. And for those building the, the kit, there's a lot of gaps here that you can see all the way across. Now, again, I'm not a Millennium Falcon expert, but those gaps were fairly significant. So after I applied the white primer, I went back and I, I used uh, Mr. Surfacer uh, 500 and I, and I put that in and filled the seams. You don't really have to sand them as long as you fill them up. And then after I did all um, the, the filling and the uh, sanding of any leftover seams, um, then of course I, I applied Tamiya tape to mask the canopy, I decided then to start with a black base and work up. Um, now, you've seen a lot of episodes of people doing modulation. That's a technique that we, we call now modulation. That's to give depth to a model. And in this case, I decided to do start with black and um, work from there and leave the dark areas and the shadows in that color. And you'll see how I'll apply lighter and lighter layering on top of that um, and then blend it all together. That's the way I do things. Dave Forrest is a master at modulation. He, he does it right out of uh, his eye and he's doing it. I tend to, as you'll see a little bit later, uh, use very stark colors combinations. And then I blend them with a universal uh, coat. That's not dissimilar to when you're doing, uh, you know, those complex mottling camouflage, say, of Italian aircraft. Um, a lot of guys will do a uh, base spray to kind of blend everything in. So I'm going to kind of use that technique uh, on this model. So the first thing is the color of the Minion Falcon. Uh, as I said before, I'm not an expert on Star Wars, but I, I, I asked around, what is the color of the Minion Falcon? Um, and Alex Kung, who is a member of our IPMS Toronto and an expert in this area, um, said to me that uh, he used a mix of uh, four parts of uh, Tamiya, he uses Tamiya white uh, to one part uh, deck tan. And then I found a website where they did a uh, uh, survey of what color people use and qu about 15% of the modelers according to that use this combination. Others use light gray, some people use white. But I took Alex's uh, advice and, and, and uh, I used this. Now here's the only difference that I applied. Um, I'm using XF2 and I'm actually using X2. This is the flat white, this is the gloss white, and uh, this is the deck tan. The reason why I add gloss in, into the mix, I find that with a semi-gloss it just covers nicer over a large model like this. Um, it could be me, but everybody's different, but that's what I like to do. So first thing, like anything, shake the can. And now, I just use broken coffee sticks. Uh, I know some guys have those stir machine rotors or whatever but I just use this to stir the paint make sure everything's okay um, and um, 
that's the easiest way. So make sure that all of your paint is not stuck to the bottom. And in this case, I'm just giving you an idea that I'm going to start mixing this white and deck tan for the base color. But the thing I wanted to note is that I used the term contrast before. And although it's four parts white to one part beige, I'm going to add a little bit more beige here because what I'm doing is I'm starting with a very stark black. I'm going to end up with a, a, with a, a color that's leaning more towards the deck tan uh, portion for most of the model. And then later on, I'll show you what I'll do with the highlights. So I'm literally just taking all this paint uh, and I'm just putting it all together. Now you can, you can quibble about amounts and, and this, that, and the other, but I find that for me, it, it's just about what looks right. Uh, in this case, I'm probably aiming for a bit more of a, of a beige color. Okay, I'm probably getting paint on Dave's beautiful little table here. Um, see, it's, it's a little bit more on the beige side because I want that contrast. If any of you modelers out there, I find that if you're tr aiming at a modulation technique, try not to, and as I said before, Dave Forrest is a master at this, try, try to get a little bit more contrast and it may not look great because if your colors are too subtle and by the time you apply the filters and washes, you're going to lose all that modulation. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. That's not bad. It looks more like a, a tan color. So maybe I can start with that. Okay. And again, I'm just doing this by eye. You can always uh, fix that a little bit later. Okay. So we'll put that away. I'll load up the airbrush and I'll be back in a minute. It starts spraying. All right. So I've mixed the paint. It's a little bit on the deck tan side as I wanted it to be. Um, now, I'm just going to use the Tamiya thinner because these are Tamiya paints. Um, my preferred thinner, however, is this stuff. It's uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. This stuff works really well with Tamiya colors. I've also had success with this with the uh, the old Gunzi line. I think they call it Akias uh, water-based paints. Um, and I noticed they all also work well with the new uh, MIG line of paints. This stuff is really wonderful. It really levels out the paint. Um, but today I'm, I'm just using the Tamiya because we're spraying in Dave's garage uh, and we want to make sure that we don't breathe too much of this. It's not that this stuff is smelly. It's just that uh, it, this stuff is a little bit more tame to the nose. Um, the other thing I do is, is um, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I, I, uh, I get these little paper couplets uh, from um, uh, Costco, can I say that? Uh, and I take just a few and, and I use them for mixed cups. Um, the other thing I do is I take a pantyhose, okay? Um, it's gotta be new. Uh, and I, I usually strain my paints. So I usually put them over in a cup like this after I mix them. And there's this one's already been thinned. Um, and you pour it through and you see how the consistency I want is, is, is it doesn't go through easily because then it's too watery you want to see a little bit of the paint held back on the uh, uh, on the stocking and then you kind of got the right consistency and that just gets rid of any guck in the paint especially when they're old bottles okay now that i've got this I just load it up on the airbrush now you notice the model's got a lot of dust on it um and i usually use a, a, one of those computer dust cans uh but you want to make sure that when you're spraying the model that all the dust is off because there's nothing worse than getting dust on your mouth which is one of these big things and um, I'm just doing this in the garage here uh, now normally I'd use a duster can to get everything off but I think for now I'll just give you an idea on how we start painting this monster all right now what I've done is this kit has all the detail on it uh, there are uh, extra parts to this kit see in here uh, the kit comes with the option to have the uh, the ramp lowered in the lowering position, and you can you can see it fits in fits in there like this. You ha I haven't painted these yet. Uh, the landing gear can 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 come in and come out, so you can have this in various uh, modes of flight. This is the uh, cover uh, for the the landing ramp uh, that that is in the flight position. Uh, so these will be done separately later. Um, and uh, we'll just basically start with, uh, with the kit. You can also see that I've actually labeled some of these. 
rear, rear cover, front cover. That just gives me an idea where those parts go. So I've just got this on my you know, ad lib little spray thing here. Load up the airbrush. Now, what I'm doing here in this first step is pretty easy. All I'm doing is I'm spraying the model, right? See, I'm, I'm not going into the, the crevices. I'm just doing the center patterns of the model. And it's okay to leave, see a little bit of black there. And in here, you see, I'm not going into I'm not covering everything. I want to do a light. Now I'm spraying, this is an Iwata HPB. I'm probably spraying at about 12, 15 PSI. Oh, we have an error here. Um, that's okay because just wipe it off. Look, and you can just go over it again. And I'm probably spraying at about 12 PSI, 15 PSI. I like, like lower pressures. And it's okay to make it look a little bit uneven. It's all right. You see, you want to leave a little bit of black here. I'm going to do this panel. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Um, a lot of Millennium Falcons appear to be white uh, when they finish the kit. Now, this one's going to be beat up a bit. But this is the portion that I'm doing. It's, it's, it's modulation. You want to modulate the color and give a little 3D effect. Again, there's about 15 PSI, I'm about two to three inches from the from the surface. The paint is about 50-50 with the thinner. And uh, this is probably like a 0.3 nozzle. But you see this little detail here? Just do a little bit, little bit, done, right? A little bit, little bit, done. You can go over some of the central areas. A little bit more. See? See how I'm going around some of these details? It's Modeling is an art too, right? And again, in these details and crevices, I'm not too concerned about full covers. That's exactly what I want. I want the black in there so you can see the, uh, the effect. See? I'm doing panel by panel. I can go back and kind of fill in the center of some of this. Now I usually have a filter trap. I'm using Dave's hose here. I usually have a filter trap up here and on the compressor, because you'll find in some climates, um, you want to be spraying where there's a little moisture in the air. Today's not bad. Uh, we're in December in Toronto. Look at that, I've already done this first piece. You can actually see some bit of water droplets here. You can always go over them, right? And don't be too fussed about making sure I cover everything. Um, you, if you go too tight, see the problem is is build up. You go too far, it's a little too much. It doesn't. You have to keep going, and then you don't get the easy. You're you're kind of like two to three inches at this speed here. You can just go over that. Now these parts here are photo etch. You have an option in this kit to either use photo etch or they have injection. I decided to use the photo etch. So I actually painted the details underneath and I left them in black. And then this one, you just, you just a little bit further out, just kind of dusting it on because you don't want to cover all the details in there. There's a bit of dust on there. And you can come over that a little bit later, okay? You have this gun position here. You can do the gun separately. And by the way, this gun position here there's masks on there because those are clear parts, um, right? Pretty easy. Panel by panel, you actually want this effect. You want to see some, now this is an artistic thing, you want to see these uh, panel lines and a little bit darker and in the middle, a little bit brighter. And what I'm going to do after this stage is I'm going to go over with uh, a very pure white in the center of this, and then as I mentioned before, I'm not as good at modulation as Dave is. I'm going to come back and do an overall spray of the mix that Alex suggested, which is more of a off-white uh, with a tiny bit of uh, deck tan, and that'll that'll bring everything together. Okay, so see these details? You can see I'm just hitting the highlights. I'm just hitting. See how fast it is? I'm just hitting the highlights. Go along those pipes. See the effect? 
I'm not too concerned about covering the whole thing. I don't want to cover the whole thing. Cover by it. by eye. Okay. So you, you begin to get the effect. It's hard for the camera to tell, but there's a bit of a beige to that. Okay, so I'll come back and then do the highlights and we'll continue from there.